Hey folks, um, so the dozer's done uh, for the uh, D7 dozer and the Tiger 2 diorama. I noticed in my last video I kept calling it a Tiger 1. I'm not sure why I was doing that. Maybe because I want to build a Tiger 1 and I'm planning to build one in an upcoming diorama. And I have Tiger 1 on the brain. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Um, Either way, uh, so this thing is finished. Um, after I got the tracks done, the rest of it just kind of sort of fell together. It wasn't that hard. Uh, it was mostly just the dozer assembly that had to be done. And that wasn't that big of a deal. There was, it was fairly simple. <clears throat> Bit of cleanup. Um, yeah, but the, the parts went together fairly simply. I think there was one mislabeled part, I think. I seem to remember one, but I'm, I'd have to go back and look. I've already put the instructions away. I don't need them anymore. <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, um, I was hoping that the blade was going to be articulated, but when I was building these little um, piston assemblies on both sides, uh, when I got to that part, I realized that there's really a, not much of a chance of it being articulated, even though this arm here, this swing arm, and these blade arms they're completely articulated you can completely move them if you really wanted to be enterprising you could replace this whole thing here with um, a sleeve a spring and then an insert tube and make it articulated if you really wanted to and then the blade could go up and down and you could pose it the reason why this specific dozer is for this kit is this this specific dozer here and if you notice that blade is in an elevated position pushing against the tiger so if you wanted to build that dozer doing this thing like I am you would need to be able to articulate this and not have it in, have it sitting flat on the ground so that's a bit of a quandary I can't elevate that blade um, unless I do something about that and I'm not very I probably could do it, maybe, but I'm not going to because I've already built the thing and I didn't notice that I wouldn't be able to articulate the um, the dozer boom arms until it was far too late for me to do any kind of modifications. So, yeah, a little bit annoyed at that. Um, I can sort of fake it by changing the elevation of the ground. Um, so the ground will have a bit more of a cant to it so that the tiger will be a little bit lower and the dozer will be a little bit higher so that the blade will be in the proper position and line up to its pushing point against the side of the tiger. The other thing that I've done is decided not to use the kit that I had planned to use for the Tiger 2 and I'm going to use this one. Um, this is a super detailed tiger that I did a long long time ago. That's why it looks all dusty and dirty and everything. Um, and the paint job is all faded and everything is because it's really old. Um, so this is going to get um, the, a treatment of detailing. Um, in other words, I will compare what this looks like to the photograph, take off anything that's not supposed to be there. Like, I don't think it has these spare track links and stuff. Maybe some of the tools might be missing. Nope. Yeah, some of the tools are missing. The fender is missing here. Um, this part of this fender here is missing. Um, no, these are there. Okay. It looks like some of the spare track links have fallen off here and they're lying in the back. Back here, they're lying here. Um, but yeah, so whatever. I'm not sure what that is. That looks like a hatch cover. But it's not. I don't know what that is. That looks like a handle from a inertial starter there. Interesting. I don't know what that is. It doesn't look like a familiar part of that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. It maybe it's part of this. If it is, I have no idea what it is. I'm not familiar enough with the dozer in order to tell you. Maybe it's a pile of dog shit that's very angular. I don't know. Um, 
either way, uh, so I have to, you know, study the uh, better quality photo than this. I have better quality photos than this printed one. Um, and see what's missing, what's not. Like there's some, the, the tow cables are missing from here. Um, and uh, <clears throat> anything else that's not supposed to be on here, I have to take off. And it also has some camouflage net on here. Um, and it looks like it's the fine stuff, which I happen to have. I have a, I, I buy hair nets on uh, Amazon and I use them for camouflage netting. Um, I find it looks better than the gauze. Depends on the type of netting too. There's different kinds. So um, this is the very thin looking stuff. So I might use that for the camouflage netting that they have on here. Um, so yeah. So and then this after all the detailing has been done, I have to um, repaint it. Uh, now I painted this a long time ago, so I probably would have just painted this with um, back in the days when I thought that flat black paint was good primer, which it isn't. That's not priming. It's just painting. Um, and then paint it over that. Um, so it'll be easy for me to just, I just reprime this and start fresh with new paint. I don't have to do anything. I rarely strip the paint off when I'm repainting. It depends on how old the build is and how much weathering has been done on it. On this, the only weathering that I ever did on this was a little bit of oil work, and it was at the very beginnings when I first started doing oil work, uh, so it was very small amounts of it, so there's nothing to cover it. Once I prime it, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, it'll be all sealed in anyway, so um, it won't be a problem. Uh, yeah, so... So yeah, so this is going to get a whole new paint job. This thing is, like I said, it was super detailed. It's got, you know, workable flaps, and there's photo etch clamps everywhere, and all that stuff. It's a metal barrel. It's got through model tracks. Um, yeah, so I spent like, quite a bit of time on this thing many, many, many years ago. Um, but I did have another plan for this thing, but um, I'm not going to do it now if i am going to do it it might be next year so and it just means i'd buy another kit Ooh, i might actually think about getting a men kit for it so um yeah i like the surface texture for the steel better on the men kit than on this one this is a dragon kit so um what else no, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it's not about it. Uh, so I, I mentioned before that I was going to dress up the background uh, in the photograph. You can't see anything that's going on behind this or anything that's going on behind here. And you can't see anything that's going on in the foreground. So it's kind of sterile. I mean, you can see some stuff in the distance. Like this hillside here and this lamppost here or telegraph pole, as they call them in Europe. Um, <clears throat> And you can see the road surface. It's quite torn up because of the bulldozers, bulldozers activity. Um, but and it looks like he, you know, the bulldozer's gone behind the tiger and cleared a spot behind the tiger to make a place for it to go after he's pushed it off the road. So he's made a quite a mess around here. But you can't see anything else. So I decided that maybe I would fill the scene out, make it a bit more interesting by adding some figures, as I always do. But I'm not painting any figures this time. I'm tired of painting figures. Um, one of the reasons I haven't gone done any progress on the other diorama that I have on the go is because it has a lot of figures, and I don't want to paint any right now. I'm not in the mood to paint figures. So, uh, so what I decided to do is, out of shot, is yeah, I put in these two military policemen here that would be blocking the road, and then this horde of military policemen hanging out back here that are blocking the road, and they're both out of shot. So if, per, per se, these guys, per se, I don't know why I said that. If, for example, these two guys are the guys who took the picture. They were taking the picture so they wouldn't be in the shot. They're taking the picture of this. These guys wouldn't be in the shot because they're behind the dozer so you wouldn't see them at all. So that's the story I'm going with. And it adds a little bit of life and interesting features to the scene anyway. And there's a guy inside the tank or inside the bulldozer too he's driving the bulldozer so um there's nobody inside the tiger because you know elvis left the building i actually have no idea what knocked that out i can't see any 
anything on there that tells me why. It's probably ran out of fuel. Most likely that's what's happened. That was one of the larger causes of those, or it was hit by aircraft. But if it was hit by aircraft, it would look different than that. It would be a, probably upside down and end in a very big hole. But, um, yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so that's my story, I guess, and I'm sticking to it. So, uh, so the next thing for this is to um, basically scale out the size of uh, diorama base that I'm going to go with. Uh, if these figures are going to move closer or move back, to, if these jeeps are going to move closer or move back, um, and the determined width is probably going to be no wider than that, right? So it's going to be about maybe. 30, 35 centimeters wide, and maybe 45 centimeters long. That's what it looks like. I don't really want it to be quite that long, but it's probably going to be quite that long. Um, and the final positioning of the vehicles and stuff like that will be determined of that. This is going to be in the very center, regardless. So, um, so that's that's what's going to be next, uh, and I'll probably start working on that sometime this week, not today. Um, I have other things I want to do today, and none of them are modeling related. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got. No, it's not all I got. I got one more thing. Um, I've been trying to remember to mention this for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now, because I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now, and I've never done anything about it. Uh, I opened a, an Instagram account, and it was for my Facebook page. Went and presumably for my YouTube channel. I thought, you know, they would all work together, but I have absolutely no understanding on how Instagram works. And uh, I've had it for a few weeks now, and I'm still kind of at a loss as to what the fuck Instagram is for. Um, so I, I'm guessing, I think, I'm pretty sure that Facebook owns Instagram, and the two of them are supposed to work together somehow. I haven't quite figured out how that works. Right. Um, I know that when people comment on stuff that I post on Instagram, I get weird messages on my Facebook page notification center. But the way Facebook works is really annoying to inter interact with it. It seems to only be set up to work on a phone, which I rarely use. I don't. I have a cell phone, but it's not set up to be a cell phone. It's actually just a camera, and I use it around the house on my Wi-Fi. It doesn't. Need, it has a SIM card in it, but it's an Israeli SIM card. I just I bought it on eBay, and stuck it in there so that it would stop giving me the notification that I didn't have a SIM card in it anymore. I don't. I don't need a cell phone. I have no need for a cell phone. I don't call people, and I use Facebook Messenger to text people. I don't text people. Um, so I think that. Because of the way I use the technology, it's why I probably am having a hard time understanding this Instagram thing. The other thing is the way it handles pictures, it's fucked up. It doesn't do the proper layouts when it comes to pictures. You can't see the whole picture. It only takes, you have to manipulate the picture in such a way so that it's sitting where you want it to. It doesn't take the whole picture into account. It only shows part of it. It's really annoying. So, and I, I, I told myself I'd give myself a couple of weeks. Um, to figure out Instagram, and I figured after a couple of weeks, if I haven't figured out, one, what it's for, because I still haven't figured out what it's for. So far, what it looks like is I post pictures on there, people who I don't know hit a like button, and maybe out of 40 or 50 people, one person might comment in some language that I don't understand, some comment in English, and that's it. And then a bunch of people with unintelligible names um, follow me. <clears throat> but there's like no social interaction, really. There's no community sense. There's nothing. <laughs> I, I, I don't actually know what Instagram is for. I haven't figured it out. <clears throat> now, uh, like I said, I've only been on there for a couple of weeks, so maybe it takes longer than that to figure it out. Or I'm just not the kind of person that's ever going to figure out what the hell Instagram is. Um, I, I don't know. Um, so, so far, it just looks pointless and stupid to me. Um, 
just posting pictures and then not having any kind of real purpose to them because there's no there's no real back and forth with them at all it's like walking into a room and shout sh of crowded people shouting as loud as you can and only a few people turn to look at you and wave and then they go back to what they're doing you know you can be the most important person in the room and everybody looks at you they just look a little longer and then they go back to what they're doing it's meaningless <laughs> That's the thing about it. It's meaningless. There's no substance to it. I think that's probably what it is. So I don't think I'm going to be sticking it out. I know a few of you have that followed me on Facebook, have followed me on Instagram stuff, but I don't think I'm going to be sticking it out because I can't figure it out. Um, it's been suggested that I open a Twitter account, but I'm sorry. I know political leaders and stuff like that use Twitter and stuff, but I'm a grown-up and I refuse to twit. And that for because that is a descriptor that can be used to describe what it is, I refuse to do it. Sorry, I'm, I've seen what political leaders use Twitter for, and they behave like children, <clears throat> and grown adults behave like children on it. And then I just deemed it as for children, and I'm not going to use Twitter. It's stupid, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Facebook is as childish as I think as I'm going to go. So is YouTube. So, so of course, I build models in my basement. Uh, well, it's either that or go out and hang out in bars and beat the shit out of people on a weekend. I could do that, too, but I'm getting old now and slow. Anyway, um, what else? Anything else? No, I think that's what all I got. I can't think of anything else I wanted to say. Yep, that's it. Anyway, that's all I got. You guys be good. Keep your stick on the ice. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.